over here is our Zenith Extreme motherboard and <laughs> what a motherboard. To know more about it, please click on the top right hand corner of your screen to see the review I've made of it a few weeks back. The very first thing to notice here is a massive EATX form factor of our motherboard. It does bring a unique set of challenges, but we will address those later on in this video. The other thing I'd like to mention is the fact that it comes with a built-in IO shield, which I really appreciate and which will make our life a little bit easier. Here we are going to put our motherboard in place, making sure to align the IO shield with the chassis opening. And once all the screw holes are aligned with the motherboard, we will be able to secure it in place with eight of the provided screws. The screw hole marked in blue on your screen is only here to stabilize the motherboard in place. And please note that when tightening the screws, finger tight is quite enough. And that's what all the fuss is about, the Threadripper 1950X from AMD. It does come with a couple of tools which will be useful for the installation. First, our proprietary hex screwdriver and an all-in-one water cooling head adapter. Make sure not to lose a hex screwdriver. Without it, we will not be able to secure the CPU onto the motherboard. Make sure to follow the instructions of your screen to finalize the unboxing of our processor. It's not as easy as uh, it seems and there are a few steps to it. Interestingly, the processor itself is housed into an orange colored bracket and that's because it is a much larger processor that we may be accustomed to and of course there are more risks to damage it. Its installation is also very delicate, therefore I have divided our screen in a top and a side view. That should make our task a little bit easier. And here's a glorious and massive TR4 socket, which is here to support our Threadripper CPU. In order to open the bracket, we are going to uh, unsecure the screw, which is marked with the number one. And to do so, we are going to use the proprietary hex screwdriver, which was provided with our CPU. Once done, a spring should open uh, the bracket for us. Next step is to pull on those two blue handles, slide away the CPU dummy, and finally remove the CPU socket protective cap. It is well protected because there are no less than 4094 individual pins which populate this massive TR4 socket. If we were to bend or damage any of those pins, our guarantee would be voided and we would need to get a brand new motherboard. So it is very important to go very slow on the next step. Alright, now that you have been warned, let's jump right in. We first are going to slide the CPU into the CPU holder and slowly put it back into its original position. Make sure that the CPU bracket screw razor is on the northern side of the hole of our CPU house. Not like this, that's not good, has to be like this. Now that this is done, we can finally secure back the CPU bracket into its original position. And to secure it, we are going to use our proprietary hex screwdriver and tighten the screw number one, two and three in its order. Make sure not to apply too much pressure on any of them and try to have an equal amount of pressure among all of them. Uh, failing to do so might cause a 00, zero CPU failure error code on our first boot. Alright, so time to install our Aura compliant 96GB DDR4 RAM onto our motherboard. They will be arranged into a 3 channel configuration and I will go in their individual channel order. If we had only one stick of RAM, we would put it on the A1 slot. To ensure its correct orientation, we have an indentation on the RAM stick itself and a plastic notch on the slot. One slide into place, apply a slight pressure first here and then here and this will lock our RAM stick in place. And we are going to do the very same thing for the slot C1, completing our first channel, then slot D1 and B1 for our second channel and finally the slots A2 and C2 for our third channel. I have decided to equip our system with only M.2 solid state drive and that's because for one it's very small, secondly it's extremely fast and very simple to install so if it is your first time worry not. Our first M.2 solid state drive will be placed under the heat shield of our motherboard chipset. Removing the chipset heat shield is as easy as removing three screws. Underneath we will find the M.2 solid state drive connector with at least three different screw razor placing holes and this will allow the motherboard to accommodate up to three different sizes of M.2 solid state drive sticks. 4.2 
6 or 8 cm. In our case, we will use the 8 cm stick. Now we're going to put in place the screw razor, the M.2 solid state drive in its connector and secure it with a one millimeter screw. The other side of our heat shield hides a thermopad and that thermopad will help us keeping our M.2 solid state drive as cool as possible and delay any kind of thermal throttling in our system. We are going to remove the protective film and put back in place the thermo shield onto the chipset. Secure it with the three screws and we're done with this. The other M.2 solid state drives in our system will be installed on a DIM.2 adapter. In a nutshell, it simply is a PCI Express which can accommodate up to two M.2 solid state drives ranging from 3 to 11 cm long. Worth noting and potentially very useful, we have a couple of thermistor connectors which will allow us to monitor live the temperature of our memory sticks. Again, since we're going for an 8cm M.2 solid state drive, we are going to place the screw razor appropriately. And as we've done earlier, we are going to secure in place our M.2 solid state drive onto our DIM.2 adapter. Nothing very difficult so far. In our next step, we are going to take our populated DIM.2 adapter and place it onto our motherboard. It is very similar to installing a RAM stick. Simply make sure that you are following the correct orientation and apply some pressure on one side of the DIM and then on the other side to lock it into place. This is a Threadripper TR4 compatible water block from EKWB and it is just as massive as the processor is. Overall the installation is very simple though. The only thing to watch for is the screw alignment. One set is further apart than the other so make sure that your water block does align with the screws on the motherboard. But before doing so of course we have to put some thermo paste. The CPU die is so big, uh, I decided to go for an X, but uh, feel free to put as much as you feel comfortable with. Last part of it all is to simply remove the protecting film from the cooling head of our water block and place it slowly and gently onto the processor. When securing a water block, try as much as possible to apply the very same pressure on each of the screws. Okay, we're done for this video. Uh, next up, radiator and water pump. 